Mr. Bill O'Reilly, it has been uh, a pretty hectic week, but I don't know the last week that we went. No, nah, really nothing happened. Uh, and I think we should start with uh, your op-ed today, uh, the Trump media war. Okay, back. I'm ready to go. Good. Then g- go. <laughs> the Trump media war uh, is, I would say, depressing uh, to Americans who are thinking people um, because it basically signals that there's not going to be any unity in this country while President Trump is holding the office mm-hmm. because neither side is going to back down. All right. But then I, uh, I took a letter out of my historical collection by Harry Truman, which makes the column really worth reading. And I say this is nothing new. Um, and Truman just excoriates the media and gives examples about how it was so unfair to Abraham Lincoln and George Washington and other presidents. So it really isn't new. What is new is the machines, the tweets, uh, the hysteria on cable news. All of that is new. But, you know, it seeps into the culture, and it makes us a, uh, a more disagreeable population, Beck. So let me, let, let me go back, because, the, you know, the first paragraph of, of your, um, your op-ed, which is honestly the only paragraph I read. Um, <laughs> Mr. Preparation. Was, was, uh, <laughs> was, uh, about, it was about Jim Acosta. Yeah. So so let me let me let me go here because you're you're absolutely right on uh, th- this has always been this way. It's just everywhere now and it's yeah. in our own personal life and we are participating in sharing it now. So it's everywhere. Um uh, but let me specifically go to Jim Acosta because I'm really I, I'm 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 sick of this uh debate here. I think and correct me, tell me where I'm wrong here. I think the president taking away Jim Acosta's um, uh, pass, White House pass, is justified in this case because Jim Acosta needs somebody, should be CNN, to say, Jim, there are rules. And you can ask a follow-up question. It used to always be, sir, I have one question and I'd like a follow-up. Yes, go ahead. Then the follow-up. He would not stop asking questions. The president answered. He really tried to answer to the best of his ability and peacefully and nice, nicely. Jim Acosta really didn't even ask a question. He was just trying to condemn the He was picking a fight with the president. Um, CNN should have said, Jim, stop it. We don't behave that way. And I don't care how the president behaves. We're not going to behave that way. So the, the, the question is... Is this a freedom of speech issue or freedom of, of, of the press issue? I don't think it is. No, it's a quality control issue. Uh, on BillOReilly.com, that's where the column that you uh, refuse to read. And, and, Beck, you're wealthy enough to have people read it to you. Oh, I can't pay people enough. I can't pay people enough to follow you and read it. Oh, they can't, um, they can't do yeah. it. They're like, please. So the column's on BillOReilly.com. <laughs> and yesterday we uh, brought in a guy, a lawyer, a former prosecutor, who uh, went down line by line over CNN's complaint and pointed out at least a dozen inaccuracies in the complaint to the federal judge. They were flat out wrong and provable wrong. You could see it with your own eyes. And I said, well, will that influence the judge that CNN is not telling the truth about Jim Acosta and the, uh, what happened in the uh, White House briefing room? Will that? And he said, well, it shouldn't influence the judge's ruling on the constitutional request. But it'll tee off the judge because the judge will see that CNN is lying, which they clearly were in the complaint. So that tells you that CNN has no interest. Give, me, give me the give me the lies because I, I miss that. Uh, okay. And that you, sounds well, like yeah, the first why, segment. That's BillOReilly.com every night. I know. It sounds like the first it's segment me. in three years that I've been interested in. Uh, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> He's just so jealous. Oh, he's such a jealous guy. He you is, know? Bill. I agree with well, you. Rub some of that pain killer on your forehead right now, will you? Jeez. <laughs> okay, um, go ahead. Okay. Uh-huh. So it's basically CNN alleges in its complaint to the federal federal judge that Acosta simply asked a question. That's that's lie number one. Yes. It's not what he did. All right. He harangued the mm-hmm. president and yes. insinuated that he was lying mm-hmm. when he labeled the caravan an invasion. Correct. 
That's not a question. Mm-mm. It's an insinuation and a harangue. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows it. There's nobody's going to say it isn't. Even the people at CNN won't say it isn't. No, that's yet the management puts that in writing to a federal judge. Come on, it's ridiculous. So your question was: Shouldn't CNN try to rein in uh, its chief White House correspondent from disrupting a national press conference? And the and the answer is: CNN wants the disruption. It's the only way they're going to get in the news their ratings are horrible um and and so and their business model is to destroy the trump presidency so of course they're going to say hey jim you you know go on in cnn's not banned from the white house they have correspondents that cover the uh, presidential press conference just not acosta because he will not obey the rules of decorum (laughs) well here's the here's a let me play devil's advocate and i don't i do not think this is what's going on but we have to protect. I don't want a, you know, I wouldn't want, uh, you know, Fox News to have, uh, who was it? Major Garrett was really good at holding Obama's feet to the fire. Uh, Jake Tapper, when he was, I think, with ABC, he was really good at holding. They, they were the only two that did. And I don't well, I mean, want the. Pre- do hang it. on, hang on. Hype down for a second, man. So um, <laughs> <laughs> for, I don't want the president to be able to say, I don't like the fact that he asked me tough questions. What I want is they have to be respectful. And those guys were. They were always respectful of the president and the office. That's not what's happening with Jim Acosta. If he were asking questions, tough questions, he would have every right to do it. And I would celebrate and I would stand behind his right to ask the toughest questions. But that's not what he's doing. But it's obvious it's not what he's doing. Yeah. And the White House denying him the press pass was not based on editorial content. It was based on behavior. He was misbehaving in their, in their opinion, in the White House opinion. So now the judge has to make that determination. Has to say, was it the uh, banishment of Acosta based on his behavior or was in an editorial statement, and I think it's clear, clear. Now, I mean, that it was behavior. Bill, so you, we'll you, see if the if the judge, who is a Trump appointee, comes back today and gives CNN relief. All CNN is asking for today is a restraining order against banning um, Acosta, not the whole decision. But what the judge will say is yes or no. Um, you have to give him the uh, pass back. Which why did he? Why basically. did he ask for an extra day? Uh, I don't know. I I, I believe that uh, this is obviously the judge's big moment mm-hmm. in the spotlight, and he wants to probably go over his decision, uh, every word of it, because he knows he's going to get hammered either way. Yeah. Whatever his decision is, the judge is going to get hammered. So he needs wants to go over a little more time and just get the wording correct. That's speculation but that's what i would surmise bill separate from the actual court proceedings because you said something and i think i totally agree with it which is cnn wants the disruption this is the way they're making news you know jim acosta doesn't care about the truth jim acosta wants to be a star he he wants to make he wants to put himself and elevate himself to the level of a fight with the president of the united states my question is just strategically from the trump administration standpoint doesn't this elevate him and put him on this platform where it's Trump versus Acosta, and it's giving Acosta everything he wants to be a martyr for the First Amendment. Well, Trump sees it differently in the sense that Trump wants to build a wall, not only to keep out migrants on the southern border, but against criticism from the national press. And part of the wall is convincing Americans that the press will never report accurately on him. Mm -hmm. And look at this uh, guy. Look at him. So Trump, the Trump administration believes that Acosta's aggression helps them by diminishing Mm -hmm. the press in general. Mm -hmm. And, And, you know, I'll tell you what, if you look at the surveys about Americans and how they feel about the American media, they're down there uh, in the 30s now. They don't trust them. They don't like them. So this, it could be something to that. So what that's you, why Trump is doing it. Uh, why did Fox take the stand with CNN? Well, that's an excellent question, Beck. Of course it is. It came from me. 
I know. <laughs> a guy who doesn't read the research material before he interviews. Oh, you know I read every word people. of that damn thing. I had to take no dose to get through I know. it. <laughs> I know, Vic. Um, this is a, uh evaluation on the Glenn Beck radio program based upon my knowledge of what is happening at FNC. Okay. Uh, regime change. That happened when Roger Ailes left the company. Mm -hmm. Now the new people are not um, of the same mindset of Mr. Ailes. All right? That's number one. So there has been a change, a shift. And the shift has basically been we have to become more mainstream, not more liberal, all right, but more mainstream. We have a powerful brand. Um, We uh, have a loyal audience. And now we have to get closer to the other national media. That's what we want to do. That is the strategy. That okay. won't work. Okay. Well, maybe not. Well, I mean, what I'm is mainstream? What is, what is why they did what they did? Right. But what, what does mainstream mean? Uh, we want to be closer they to the mainstream. They want to be mean. in the club. They'll never be in the club. Well, we celebrated when you and I were there. We celebrated the fact that we were not in the club. Correct. We enjoyed the maverick status, yes, which propelled Fox News to the top of the news ratings. Right. That attitude, like we don't care about the corrupt media because we know they're not telling the truth, and we're happy we're not in that club. That has changed. The day we that the, the day that Fox the News fires their entire primetime lineup and to replace it with Shep Smith is the day they would consider, consider uh, allowing Fox News into the club for about two days. Well, that's true. I mean, Fox News is so demonized by the far left that no matter what it does. Yeah. But Fox News does not want to be criticized by the Washington Post and the New York Times and CNN. So, they said, okay, well, we'll throw in with the freedom of pre- uh, peace, uh, freedom of press movement, mm. and we'll uh, file an amicus brief, and uh, maybe that'll uh, send a signal that we want to be friends. We want to be friends mm. with you guys. Okay, so Bill O'Reilly, when we come back, I want to talk to you a little bit about the uh, yes. border and what is happening. Uh, and something I, I actually heard today driving in on, uh, I don't remember what it was, it, some liberal podcast uh, that I was listening to driving in, and they said, uh, you'll notice that uh, the the left is, or the right is not even talking about the border. They don't even care about the border. They've dropped that. No, no, no. We're talking about it. We're very concerned about it. In fact, I'm wondering what the president is going to be doing about this now. So we go to the, the caravan and Mexico and how Mexico has provided police escorts to our border. When Bill O'Reilly comes back. Glenn Beck. Mr. Bill O'Reilly. I am here. Thank you. I was just doing a roll call. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, Bill, you know, I enjoy our talks. I hope so, Beck. I mean, you know, I mean, you 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 learn... You learn and you... He cannot uh, do it. He cannot do it. He can't. He is incapable of saying, you know, me too. Me too. Well, I wouldn't do it if I didn't <laughs> like it. Uh, okay, so Bill, yeah. talk to me a little bit about uh, the border and what's happening. Okay. Well, first of all, uh, you know, we were told that it was mostly um, women and babies and children marching to the border. Remember mm-hmm. we were told that? Yes. And, okay. and then we were told that they're never even going to make it to the border. Right. So now the latest picture is uh, from San Diego sector, uh, where it seems that most of the migrants are going, have um, baby carriages on top of the uh, <laughs> on top of the wall. Did no. you see that? Did no, you, I did didn't. I, it's I weird. I'm seeing it. like 20 year old uh, yeah. guys. It's weird. Oh, oh yeah. I, I thought I saw a baby carriage right no. uh-uh. First on top of that 10 foot wall. Yeah, no. And then going, what me in? <laughs> Okay, so number one, Americans should know that all of the reporting on this situation has been a giant lie and a ruse. So what has happened is 
that this organization, uh, Pueblos in Fronteras, received a grant of anywhere from 10 to $20 million, all right, organized these uh, people in Honduras and other countries to come here. Where did, where, where did the grant of $20 million come it from? It came from the usual suspects, the far-left crews that fund all of the open border stuff. In Hungary, a law was passed against George Soros specifically. The law says anyone giving money to aid illegal immigration into Hungary will be charged with a felony. Did you know that? Yeah, I did. That, I that did. passed the parliament in Hungary. That is a law. They call it the anti-Soros law. Uh, mm-hmm. Unless you're on the left and they call it the anti-Semitic law. Yeah, I, you know, but it's, it's I know, mostly... I know. I know. Mostly, okay. So anyway, the, the goal is to break, to break the asylum system in America, to, to crash it. That's why you're seeing record numbers of families coming across the border and being mm-hmm. detained. They're being told, the migrants in Central America and in migrants, if you get here with your children, you get in. And that's largely true, as there is a three-year backlog to hear asylum cases, soon to be four years, if any of these thousands of people get in and, and ask for asylum. So that is the strategy. People should know the overall strategy of this. It's to break the system apart so that anybody could come here and ask for asylum and their case won't be held, heard for six years. Meantime, they're released into America. And there is another thing going on. I don't know if anybody picked this up. In the trial of El Chapo, currently underway here in New York, uh, he is the cartel kingpin. There are allegations being made that the president of Mexico, Nieto, was being paid by El Chapo. What oh, a shock. Yeah, not right? a shock at all. All right, El Chapo, not only a drug dealer, but a people smuggler. Okay, so now we have that. And now the new president, coming into power in about three weeks, has said, I'm going to legalize all drugs in, in Mexico. I'm going to make them legal. Oh, that'll be good. That'll be good for America. Um, so that's another reason, and Trump hasn't picked up on this, which is amazing to me, because that's another big argument for the wall. So you're going to have legalized narcotics, not pot, legalized poppy fields, heroin labs, everything. And you don't want a wall? Okay. All right. We're going to pick it up there with Bill O'Reilly, because honestly, uh That kind of takes the Al Capone out of the booze business, but I want to hear Bill's opinion on that when we come back. Back. Mercury. to the Glenn Beck program. Bill, some news just broke um, that uh, the judge has sided with CNN. On, yeah, I see it. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts? Well, you're so lucky to have me here. I know I am. Um, it'll be interesting to see if the uh, White House appeals, um, because basically the judge is saying, and this is Timothy J. Kelly, um, you can be rude, you can be disruptive, and he says it. All right? You can do whatever you want. And not lose your credentials. That doesn't make any so, sense. So, okay. That doesn't um, make any sense. Yeah. Well, certainly he will be overturned, I think, uh, by the Supreme Court. And, uh, you know, if, if they appeal it to the liberal uh, appeals court in D.C., they'll lose. But um, if they want to bring it to the Supreme Court, they'd win. Um, no doubt in my mind they win. But the other way to handle it is say, all right. Uh, Acasa, you know, he's your press pass back and never mention him again, never recognize him, never call on him, just freeze him. So he's what do you do, do then? That. Then if he disrupts the press conference, if he like says, I want my question, you haven't called on me or whatever, then you can say, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you soon and walk up the stage. He won't do you that. Know, you could do that. You could, you could do the passive aggressive thing uh, and just ice him. Or you could try for the big, uh, you know, kahuna and have the Supreme Court say, no, uh, the government does have a right on its own property 
to regulate uh, disruptive behavior, you not know, editorial Bill, behavior. There, there's nobody in their right mind. You cannot run a society. There, there is no civilization without being civil. That's right, without rules. Right. So, um, I mean, there's, there's, this doesn't make any sense at all. You remember, cannot though, just the, act any way you want. The Trump administration, the first thing you have to do is, is make some rules and distribute the rules. They don't have those now. Okay. That's a problem. But again, if they did, then they they sue on that. Oh, you mean they're limiting our access to the president, limiting what we do, what we can't do. Bad ruling. Um, what are you going to do? This is our uh, democracy. This is the way we do it. Okay. So but, uh, the Trump administration has a couple of avenues to go if they want them. Let me let me go back to the border. You say that the uh, the new incoming president of Mexico says he's going to uh, legalize all drugs. Um, doesn't this take the Al Capone no, uh, out of heck. the... No. This all this does is cut the overhead for the cartel so they don't have to bribe as many Mexicans and hire as many gunmen to shoot at the police and the army. Wait, but you don't have to shoot at the police if it's legal. I know. That's so it cuts their overhead so they don't have to spend that. All right? And it only goes, oh, thanks. Where do they make their money, Beck? Not Guadalajara, not Mexico City. They make their money in Chicago, New York, L.A., and all American cities. Mm -hmm. So it just makes it easier for them to bundle up their product and send it El Norte. This this is the best thing that could could possibly happen to the cartels. So what does that mean for uh, America and our policy? It means twice as many hard drugs here. No, no, I mean our policies, our policies. For instance, I'm I'm done with Mexico. When they they escorted those buses... They right. escorted the buses with federales to our border. That's not well, what a partner that. They're, they're does. Doing that to protect the migrants. Oh, from, shush. You know, people who would beat them up and rape them. Right. Look, I, right. I've been done with Mexico for a long time. And uh, I did go down there in the spring to Baja. Um, and I did some reporting down there about how they were handling their uh, military and dispersing them to fight the cartels. That's all gone. But now the argument for a border wall becomes even stronger um, when you say, okay, so now we have a free fire zone in Mexico. They can do all, anything they want in hard drugs, so we've got to make it harder for them to get it into America. No. And the, they still, the liberals still wouldn't put the wall because eventually they want legalized hard drugs here. You know, it's interesting. I'm watching, um, switching back on the TV, Fox News is ignoring the <laughs> – I know they are. They're ignoring it, and and CNN's doing doing a, having a limbo party. Limbo lower now. <laughs> this is so funny. Um, you know how how this whole media thing is now based on uh, Trump. Everything, a hundred percent of it, is Trump. They don't have anything else. They're going to have to run uh, Andy Griffith reruns if Trump, you know, takes a vacation for two weeks. It's, it's they don't have anything. Um, so, go ahead, Bill. Let me uh, let me change uh, subjects here. Sure. Uh, you know, I I do a uh, I, I run a charity as you run yours, uh, and this weekend we're having an uh, an auction to uh, raise funds, and I just wanted to bring a couple of things to your attention because I know you you collect uh, you know rare uh, rare writings. Um, we are. Uh, we formed a partnership with the Lincoln Museum in um, in uh, uh, Illinois, and they're the ones who have the original Gettysburg Address. And mm-hmm. as you may know, there's the, only Abraham Lincoln made a copy of it, uh, and there are no other copies. This uh, we have asked them, and shockingly, they said yes. If they would make a a high res uh, certified copy off of the original uh, so it's the only copy of the handwritten gettysburg address that we know of uh that uh, uh that is that is you know up for auction uh and in existence and i just i just wanted to bring it to your attention that uh you know the the bidding are they going to make a lot of copies or or just one no this is it this is it are oh, they going to make one high res? Uh... This is it. I'm I'm holding it right now. This is the only copy wow. that they have ever made, and they will make. I, I might bid on that deck. So can you I know? can I put you down for a number? Uh... Well, what do you have now? Three million dollars. That's what you're... <laughs> <laughs> no. I, the bidding. I don't even know. Do we have a bid on this yet? 
Yeah, but he's gonna. I gotta gotta nail him down to a price now. What 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 kind of what do you know the number? Fifteen thousand is the is the opening bid there, Bill. You should triple yeah, that at least, on. huh? All right, I'll go. I'll go. Uh, I'll go twenty. You go twenty thousand. Yep, from Mister Bill O'Reilly. Wow, wow, nice work, Bill. What a guy. What a guy. I am. I am a swell guy. You really are. You're a great guy, and you've just bought uh, uh, something that Glenn wrote down with a pencil <laughs> a half hour before the show started. <laughs> you know, I'll frame it and put it in my garage. Right, next to a picture of Beck. Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> picture of Beck forging this, by the way. If you do, I'd like to have that. <laughs> uh, all right, Bill. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Happy Thanksgiving you to uh, all you guys. And, uh Check out Killing the SS. Great gift for anybody who likes history for uh, Hanukkah, Christmas, and all of that. It is a great book. Thank you so much, Bill. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Cheers.